So like I said on yesterday's vlog, a lot of the upcoming videos on this channel are going to be predominantly tiny house related. The main reasons for that is because it's something that I'm personally very excited and very passionate about. It's something that we're gonna be doing, so obviously we're gonna be talking about it a lot on this channel. I also want to create a really epic resource uh, through these vlogs and through these videos so that people who might be interested in building a tiny house in the future, they have a resource that they can go to and watch and get an actual like real idea of what it's like to actually build one of these tiny houses. What are the pros? What are the cons? Like how much does it cost? How much time is it going to take? And kind of like getting through all the decisions that you're going to have to make uh, when you're designing and building your tiny house because there are so many little decisions and all these little decisions definitely play an integral part of how your tiny house is going to be designed and how you're going to be living in it, where you're going to be able to park this tiny house and what type of hookups are you actually going to need. There are so many decisions that really need to be made before you actually start building your tiny house so that you can come up with like a really effective design that is really going to suit your lifestyle. So one of the first decisions that you really need to make is whether or not a tiny house is gonna be right for you because there are a lot of zoning issues with tiny houses because they're not permanent structures or considered mobile structures which is good on one hand because because that means building codes don't really apply um, you don't have to get any permits for it but at the same time it's not a structure that you can technically and legally live in all year round and call your permanent house so there's like a lot of gray area and a lot of people living in tiny houses aren't living quote unquote legally because their tiny house is not a permitted structure in, in the standard way that you get a house permit in order to live in it full time as your residence. So most tiny houses are considered to be recreational vehicles and there's a lot of restrictions in terms of how long you can actually live in them throughout the year, um, where they can be parked. It's not something that's very clear cut um, but since tiny houses are becoming much more popular, there are probably going to be new kind of like zoning and codes and stuff uh, surrounding tiny houses to actually accommodate this movement because it is such a powerful movement because it does give people, it's kind of like getting a way out of these huge mortgages and these huge houses that people um, really don't need. So the first decision that you really have to think about is like whether or not I want to kind of go down this murky, not so clear, um, lots of gray area path as opposed to going with a more simpler route where you could just typically buy a standard house and just kind of go the standard route. Personally, I love going the unconventional route. If you have seen my other channel, Unconventional Living, then you understand that I'm not one to kind of like go with the status quo. Then there's so many more decisions that you really need to make. Am I gonna build this tiny house by myself or am I gonna get some hired help or am I just gonna get a company just to build it for me? Is this gonna be a tiny house that's gonna be built on the ground or is it gonna be built on wheels? Should you use uh, pre-made plans because there's a lot of pre-made plans that you can buy or should you go the more custom route and get custom uh, plans made or you can go the route that I'm going which is going to be designing it from scratch in uh, in SketchUp. Should you buy a, a new trailer or should you get a used trailer and refurbish it? It is almost always recommended to get a new trailer but maybe there's an instance where getting a used trailer might be a good idea. How are you going to heat your tiny house if you live in a cold climate? Are you going to use electric heat? Are you going to use a propane stove? Are you going to use a wood stove? Uh, what are you going to use for water? Are you going to have like a direct hookup to like say like a garden hose? Are you going to have a water tank in there um, that you're going to have to fill up with? Uh, I don't know, you're going to have to fill it up somehow. Are you going to have a shower in this tiny house or are you going to not have a shower? And then if you live in a cold climate, what about winter plumbing? Because you can't have the water connection coming from the outside just you know out in the snow for example because it's going to freeze. If you live in a climate where it gets below freezing, what are you going to do for hot water? There's many different options for toilets. Are you going to go with like one of those standard compostable toilets or are you going to get a flush toilet? And then you have options with all the different materials that you're going to get. Are you going to go with new materials? Are you going to try to salvage materials? Which direction are you going to go with that? Because all these little decisions, they make such an important part throughout the stages of designing and building your tiny house. So just getting into some of the design considerations that we are um, thinking about for our tiny house, we have the idea of what we want in our tiny house. I just haven't put it 
into a 3D model yet. I'm gonna be working on designing it in SketchUp. I just have to get some of the measurements off the trailer so that I know certain distances, and then I can actually start designing it from scratch. Some of the important design considerations for me um, for our tiny house is that everything in it is gonna be electric. Now I've watched a couple of documentaries about uh, the fracking industry. It's not something that I really want to support. So I don't wanna be using any type of uh, propane for cooking or for heating. So everything is gonna be electric. So using electric for cooking and for heating, that also poses its own problems as well. And I understand the pros and the cons to using electric. For me, it's really important that everything is actually electric in our tiny house. On top of that, another main important design consideration is we actually, we really want a breakfast bar in our tiny house. So I'll actually throw up a picture of a kind of like a kitchen design that we really like. One of the main reasons is because we shoot a lot of video on YouTube, we do recipe videos. It'd be nice to have an area in our tiny house where we could actually shoot videos, actually have it look pretty professional with really good lighting. So it was really important for us to have a certain type of kitchen design because that is where our, our business is. We are in the business of you know promoting a plant-based vegan diet and creating amazing recipes for people to try out. So actually having like a functional awesome kitchen which is much better than the one that we currently have and having like a really good set for videos is really important for us. Another important uh, design decision since both Hannah and I we work at home um, we really wanted to have many separate kind of like spaces. So we're gonna go with two lofts, and then we'll also have the breakfast bar, which is another area, and then also a main couch area, which we'll be able to work at any one of those uh, four areas. So that's really important to us so that we have some we have some kind of like separation and some time where we're apart throughout the day because it's nice to just have some space so that you're not like sitting beside um, your, your spouse the entire day. It's nice to have a little bit of space there. Another important design consideration is definitely the hookups and how is it gonna hook up? Is it gonna hook up to the grid? Is it gonna be off grid? Designing a tiny house to be fully off the grid is, is something that is, uh, I would say, quite difficult just because you have a limited amount of space. I'm not saying that it's not possible or that you, it can't be done. It's just much more complicated because you have a very finite amount of space. So with a tiny house, you can build it essentially any length that you want, um, but when you have like a longer length, then the house is typically gonna be a lot more expensive. You have to have a bigger trailer, um, but you have a limit to how high you can build it. So it can only be 13 foot six. It can only be eight and a half feet wide. So when trying to actually fit an entire um, off-grid system into a tiny house, it is, uh, it is incredibly difficult. You have to be you have to use very little electricity and very little water because you're not gonna have a lot of those resources. So when designing this house, it's gonna be designed to be able to, just to get hooked up um, to any grid system. So just like a garden hose just going in for the water and, and then probably a couple of extension cords will be for the electricity. So if you're going to decide to make it basically just be able to be hooked up to the grid pretty easily, then that's also gonna change a lot of what goes on the inside as well. So that's why there's all these different types of decisions that you really need to think um, long and hard about. A lot of them, there's pros and cons to each way that you go. So since I don't want the house to be like, you know, totally off the grid or whatever, like it's gonna limit the, uh, the number of places that we're gonna be able to actually park it. So yeah, there's just all these like tiny house uh, decisions that you really have to think about if you're very interested or wanting to build a tiny house. And something that I would recommend uh, to pick up is there's a great book, it's actually called Tiny House Decisions, and the subtitle of the book is Everything I Wish I Knew uh, Before I Built My Tiny House. And I think that's really important because before you know you go and buy a trailer and start building your tiny house, there's a lot of things that you need to know and that you need to decide before you actually start to build it and live in a tiny house. I'm gonna leave a link to that book down below in the description box. It's just really important to have a really good idea um, before you get into this, before you start designing and building and living in your tiny house, everything that you really need to know. And it's really important to take advice from people that are already living in tiny houses because they're gonna let you know essentially what the pros and the cons are um, because it does sound like an amazing thing. There's all these pros to living in a tiny house, but there's also gonna be some cons as well. And so you have to decide for yourself whether or not 
that is going to fit into your life and to your lifestyle. All right, tomorrow I'm gonna be heading to the job site and doing a little bit of cleanup there and taking some measurements on the actual tiny house trailer. And I'm gonna talk specifically um, about why we went with the tiny house trailer that we got. And uh, I will catch you on tomorrow's vlog. Talk to you soon. Peace.